ABC Sports presents, live in its 29th season, the Professional Bowlers Tour. Today, from Columbus, Ohio, it's the Columbus Professional Bowling Classic. In our first game, shooting for his second win in seven weeks is Chris Warren of Dallas. His opponent owns two Firestone crowns and six PBA titles, Mark Williams of Beaumont, Texas. Face Don Mosier, making his second consecutive championship round appearance. In the semifinal game, left-hander Tony Marisi of Hilton Head is seeking his first PBA title. And our tournament leader is the reigning PBA Player of the Year, Venezuela's Amleto Monicelli. And that's our outstanding field of finalists for today's Professional Bowlers Tour telecast. We've traveled to the capital city of the Buckeye State, Columbus, Ohio. You're looking at the Capitol building in a revitalized downtown area. Hello again, I'm Chris Schenkel, and behind me, one of the really fine bowling establishments anywhere, the Palace. We go into the second half of our winter tour, and we have had eight different winners. What will happen today, we'll soon find out. Speaking of champions, Columbus has produced many over the years. Most recently, the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world in boxing, Buster Douglas. And then, the heavyweight champion of golf, a man with 20 major titles. I'm speaking of Jack Nicklaus, who happens to be also my ABC colleague, of which we're very proud. Inside is another ABC colleague who has won 17 PBA championships. Let's join him right now, Nelson Burton Jr. one of the most beautiful bowling centers we play in all year long. 64 lanes, championship conditions, an enthusiastic crowd here all week long. They're jam-packed for the final round today. We're only a few minutes away from the very first shot in the first match. We have a strong field, and the man leading that quintet today is a man who is a heavyweight in bowling right now, Amleto Monicelli. Amleto's in the announce booth with me, and Amleto, you took a couple weeks off, let the boys uh, catch up on the money a little bit but now you're back in the number one position. What did you do in the couple of weeks you had off? Uh, the first few days I was uh, going back and forth to the clothing store. Um, then we went, we went to the beach for about six days and relaxed, do nothing. And then uh, came back and started practicing about 60 games. And then time was up, it came out, here I am. Well, you're ready to go. And let's take a look at the championship pair the players are playing on today. 49 and 50 here at the Palace. The oil is 45 feet down the lane this week. The PBA varies it every week, so it's a little bit different for each player. Oil 45 feet, then it's dry the last 15. The line for the right-handers, as it always plays in this house, is between the fourth and ninth boards. That's the first and second arrow. A medium break or the big hook out to the edge into the 1-3 pocket. For the only left-hander, the man in the number two position, Tony Marisi, is playing a straight shot right off the corner into the 1-2 pocket. Chris, a lot of prize money available, so let's see how it breaks down. In the $125,000 total, here in Columbus, 20 to the winner, 10-5 runner-up, 7, 55, and 45. And the loser of our very first match, which we go into now, will win the $4,500. Here is the man that uh, won his first tournament this year, the ARC Pinole Open, second telecast in our 1990 series. Chris Warren of Dallas, Texas, 26 years old, 115 pounds. Powerful bowling ball. And that plays him. And now another Texan, Mark Williams from Beaumont, 32 years old, two Firestone victories. Hyatt has left the 3 6 on the right lane. Mark Williams, who, uh, when he keeps his speed up around 18 miles an hour, is very, very tough. When he dominated the field in 1988 at the Fairlands Open in Baltimore, he was at 18 miles an hour all day long. On that particular shot, he was just a little soft, around 16, let the ball drift high. And tops the six off the three. Disastrous open frame in the first for Mark Williams, who... You know, missing a spare is, uh, as you see him slide by the 3-6, 
is bad enough in metal play as we have 18 games of qualifying or metal play in the PBA Tour, but when you get in the match play, the 24 game segment on Thursday or Friday night, and especially here in the championship round, missing a spare just bolsters the other opponent's uh, enthusiasm and chances. Leaving the three pin on the left lane. Uh, this is Mark's second appearance on television this year. He was third at the AC Delco Classic in Torrance. When he was fifth seated, he's fourth seated today. Winner of this match, if you just joined us, we're in Columbus, Ohio. Don Moser will be the opponent, then Tony Marisi, and then Monicelli. That's an open frame and the spare for Mark Williams. Chris Warren, the big strike on the left lane, now shooting on the right, second frame. shot as you see the style of Chris Warren short of stature cups that wrist a little bit above the shoulder then drives through that right pivot step long slide releases that ball and the hand turns all the way around the ball after the ball is released he has about the same line to the pocket as his opponent Mark Williams but Chris Warren using much more speed holding the ball online has, avail has kept the ball solid in the pocket has a 21 pin lead after just two frames takes their hurt a re-rack on the left-hand lane. Allowed three re-racks in any game. Five feet, five inches tall. Three in a row now for Chris Warren. There were three 300s here this week. The man at whom you're looking, Mark Williams, had one of them. The other two, Mike Edwards and Mark McDowell. Third frame, Williams. Good strike, Bo. Just a little more speed. Keeps the ball solid in the pocket. Look at the form of Mark Williams from the back. And watch his arm swing. Keeps that ball inside. Mark used to have trouble with his arm swing bouncing out at that point, and then he lets it roll right by his left foot, gets that ball between the second and first arrows, just more speed, and hits solid in the pocket. Great shot there. Mark Williams third in average on the PBA Tour with 216, following Robert Lawrence second at 218, and Monicelli at 218 on top. All but the 10 pin for Mark, who is relatively high money earned thus far this year, 24,000 a liter is Parker Bone at 58 grand. Right through the middle of the lanes, chops out, it looks like there's gonna be a three, six, 10 standing. The head pin comes back across, knocks out the three and six. Pretty easy spare for Mark Cross Lane. He'll flatten the shot out and make the 10 pin. Beautiful form. Mark Williams of Beaumont, trailing by 31, we'll be back. Tegrin. Tegrin medicated shampoo controls all the major causes of itching and flaking, so Tegrin is more than strong enough for tough dandruff like yours. Wouldn't you rather switch than itch? Is your car shaking, rattling, or rolling? Whether it's alignment, shocks, or struts, Midas uses top technology to diagnose the problem and top technicians to fix it. For suspension or alignment, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. The bill's twice as big as usual. Because, honey, you ate twice as much. With extra strength, Tum ZX, even twice the heartburns, no sweat. It's twice as strong, twice as fast as regular Rolaids. Okay, here's the final. It's tournament time in NCAA college basketball. Boston U over Vermont, 75 to 57. They advance uh, to the NCAA tournament via an automatic bid winning the North Atlantic finals. And Mississippi, a winner there. Of 
Breaking and stopping the string at three. 10 10. Disappointed, but good natured by uh, Smiles. Chris Warren grabs another ball, a ball with uh, a much shinier surface, cuts down the surface friction, cuts down the hook. Good for the right hand corner spares. Conversion here, he'd lead by 30. So Chris Warren continues to mark. Earlier he had some advice, some tips to the smaller bowlers, ways to help their own game. Basically, I would tell them to learn to use their legs. Uh, you have to keep your shoulders in between your knees and your hips. Therefore, you create a lot of leverage and it makes you stay down on the ball. Therefore, you create a good shot and a lot of leverage. Watch his second to last step. That's where he gets that leverage. Biggest hook of them all. Too much. Had high hopes that the 10 might go, but let's replay the shot. Watch this. Centrifugal force of the ball turning to the left. Almost goes in the gutter for a zero count. Leaves the 10 pin. Almost gets a good break to make it. Basketball scores as they come in. Of course, on ABC tomorrow, a doubleheader. Illinois, Indiana, and the finals of the SEC championship from Orlando. I'll tell you more about that later. Is Mark Williams now. Got that strike in the fifth frame, still trailing by 29, can cut it to 19 now. Our first match. Mark, who has been real good and real bad, as you see the shot clock, 25 seconds to get the shot away in this frame. He bowled a low game of 134 this week and a high game of 300. Another 10. What's the penalty um, oh, on the time? Well, if the player doesn't get the shot off in 25 seconds, he's given a warning the first time, then fined $100 the second time, and it just keeps doubling, 200, 400, etc. So nobody has been warned here today, and nobody's even close to using up the 25 seconds. Mark Williams, perhaps the quickest of them all in our field of five here today. The winner will meet Tony Marisi, and if you think Chris Warren from the right side lives dangerously, will you see Tony Marisi from the left side? He hangs it on the channel. Oh, yeah. I think he's pretty pleased with himself today. Well, he looks really, really sharp. He gained a lot of confidence when he won that tournament in Canole Valley, defeating Steve Cook with a tremendous, tremendous final game. Now watch where he's starting back here, sliding about right here, and trying to get the ball between the first and second arrows, the big hook. Oh, yeah. We're in Columbus, Ohio, at the Columbus Square Palace bowling lane, where we'll return in a moment. Nothing beats it. Nothing beats it. The one and only. Nothing beats it. The clean, the crisp, the cold. The king of beers. Nothing beats the fun. Nothing beats the king of beers. Nothing beats the fun. Dick, we sympathize with the ways that you pull and stretch your face in search of a better shave. That's why we've created the Big Metal Shaver. The patented Big Metal stretches and smooths your skin thanks to its unique metal guard bar, so the shaver glides closely and comfortably. So instead of stretching, start reaching for a Big Metal Shaver. It stretches your skin for a great shave, and that's no stretch. Figure skating's brightest stars light up Moscow. It's the grand finale of a World Challenge of Champions on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Next. 
That's right, the best of the best. Typical of ABC's wide world of sports. Three parts, World Disabled Skiing Championships, a report on Iditarod, which began a week ago on Wide World. Mark Williams. Mark's plagued by the 10 pins here on the right lane. In fact, uh, he's had three, two on the right, one on the left, and he needs to string them because his opponent, Chris Warren, has a double up as we're getting near the end. Okay, let's go to Bo Burton with Don Moser. Thank you, Chris. Don Moser, you're playing the winner of this match. It looks like it's going to be Chris Warren. Any change in your game plan with Warren being so successful with the big hook ball? No, I'm playing inside of them about five boards, and I have a very good shot. If I just come through the ball and execute well, I should be scoring well, so I shouldn't have no problem. He'll play less hook, but he wants to go a little straighter. Keep it in play, Chris. All right, Mark Williams, left mine. Spare working. Again, a 10 pin. Mark Williams won the Firestone in 1985 and again in 1988. What he did, remarkable, he won two of the first three that he competed in. 22nd uh, television appearance is second of this year. And he misses a 10 pin for his second open frame. So that puts him farther away from this little man. Here's the miss. Williams just not even taking very much time at all as he's 52 pins behind in the match and especially with Chris Warren bowling so well just slides by the 10. Now Warren has a possible 68. And then came the 710. The pros call it the swishing 710, an apparent good hit. Now watch the action of the five pin. The ball will hit the one, then the three, and watch what happens to the five pin. The ball goes wide, hits the one, three. Now the five pin gets pushed right behind the seven. That's what caused the seven, ten split. Well, he tried to do a Mark Roth. Mark, the only one to convert the seven, ten on television. Speaking of that shot, watch it. Mark Roth, the only time television makes the 7-10 split against Bill Straub to go ahead and win that match out in the San Francisco area. Now, Chris Warren, 38-pin lead, ninth frame. Comes right back, started with three in a row, had a double in six and seven, and now in the ninth, another strike. But Mark Williams, a frustrating day for him in the ninth frame, trailing by 38. comes after an open and uh, another 10. Well, Mark, with that big hook ball and medium speed, when he gets it cooking, he can shoot the big scores. That's what got him there, and he's had a few bad games all week. Unfortunately, the first game of the championship round, he's going to be in the 170-180 range. Will not be enough to defeat Chris Warren. And in match play, that head-to-head -head competition, he defeated all but Mosier. Mosier will be up next. Tony Marisi uh, is continuing to stay loose as you hear a pinfall. Williams playing out here between the first and second arrows. Good shot. When he keeps that speed up, he's right there. When he slows down, the ball drifts high. That man already knows who's won the match. He and Williams very good friends from Texas. Doesn't want to rub it in any more than it has to be. It's going to be a 30 or 40 pin victory. Fans here in Columbus, and there are many, expected Brian Voss to compete, but he sent a note to the office, and it said, due to unforeseen weight gain on my honeymoon in Italy, please withdraw me from Columbus. Brian has said to gain 10 pounds. He'll be there in Toledo next week for the PGA National. For sure. One eighty-six for Williams. Just started off badly in the first three or four frames, never got on track, missed the tenth in the eighth frame. Opened the door for Chris Warren, who looks really, really sharp. 
leaving the 610, but you have a, the winner. You're looking at it. Chris Warren, ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowlers Tour. We'll be back after this message and a word from our local ABC station. To show how Firestone Firehawk tires perform, we occasionally take some of them for a little weekend drive. At the toughest tracks across the country, we race on the same Firehawk SV street tires you can buy. Over a million miles now, and still counting. Firestone, watch us. We're on the move. Great weekend. Sure went fast. Hold it, ho, ho, ho. So you're gonna finally meet Cindy, huh? Tonight. Good. So, first impressions are very important. I think. Okay. Now, imagine. Lights are low, the music's soft. Knock the door, the door opens up. Somebody's out there doing this. What is this? She's got dandruff? No, you have dandruff. No. Yes, you I do. I shampoo every day. You shampoo your brains out with regular shampoo. shampoo wouldn't matter. brains out? Yeah, well, so use that. Head and shoulders? Works for me, my friend. But you don't have dandruff. Exactamundo! <laughs> Head and shoulders. Because you'd never get a second chance to make a first impression. Monday, children born addicted to drugs. How are they doing in preschool? Will grade school be ready for them? Watch Peter Jennings on ABC's World News tonight, Monday. Read any good books lately? He used to say this one had a lot of characters, not much plot. No more. This is the Great American Guidebook, the matchmaker, the Bella Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. Want to read a classic? Take it in your hands and open it. When you see all the new goodies in here, you'll be surprised. Get it off the top of the refrigerator and do a little light reading. The genuine Bella Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. No other book can match it. A Bell Atlantic Company. In 1929, as banks everywhere were closing, one central Pennsylvania bank believed so strongly in customer service. Good morning. Good morning. It kept its doors open and emerged as one of the strongest surviving banks. So if you get the feeling that quality service is something your bank just discovered, remember there's one bank where it's been a tradition for more than a century. Bolton Bank. Today more than ever, working harder, working smarter, to serve you better. WHTM TV 27, Harrisburg. The Professional Bowlers Tour. Brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Old Spice, number one fragrance in America and the world. And by True Value Hardware. Make True Value Hardware your store first choice. Okay, we're back again at Columbus Square Palace. Great bowling established Columbus, Ohio. Six strikes, Chris Warren eliminated Mark Williams, who will pick up $4,500 for his effort. Right here in Columbus, Ohio, Ohio State defeating Minnesota 93-83. That game taking place on the 3,300-acre campus. And for Ohio State, a very big win may get them in to the NCAA championship. Chris Warren going against Don Mosier. First shot. That's the way he started the first game. Don Mosier, here he is. You saw him last week from Fair Lanes in Baltimore, where he finished second behind a first-time winner, Danny Weissman. And he's faced with the 310. Don Moser, the down and in player, playing between the second and third arrows as you see his arm swing, which is perfectly locked, good arm swing. Now he's playing a much different line, less hook. Now it goes a little bit high. He has the baby split, the 310 split. Has to fit that ball between the 3 and 10. Let that ball bounce into the 10. Wonderful. For the 30-year-old pro. He's yet to win his first in four years of trying. Don Mosier. Mike, do you can see the little microphone there? At the shirt opening. A couple of stats so far this year. The bowler who starts the match, that would be Chris Warren, has only won 34% of the championship round matches so hmm. far this year. So, odds favor Don Moser. All right, leaving the 6-10. A little earlier I mentioned our doubleheader on ABC tomorrow, college basketball, Illinois, Indiana. And then live from Orlando, the SEC championship game with Mississippi defeating Vanderbilt today, 65-62. 
Ole Miss will play the winner of the Alabama-Auburn game. It'll be determined later. Split conversion and a spare for Don Mosier, his debut here. Second consecutive week on TV. Second time this year for Chris Warren. The quick, short footwork. This is where he gets his power. Five-step delivery. Good hard push off. Oh, the double. Let's look at the Budweiser Kingpin standings after eight weeks. Players finishing among the top 24 awarded points. Each tournament leader gets... 10 bonus points. Brian Voss, who'll be back next week. Five points ahead of Parker Bone, the leading money winner, and Robert Lawrence and Leda Monicelli could pick up some today as well. He's our tournament leader. You'll see him later. Monicelli. In a row. Tiny guy is strong early, isn't he? Well, he's gotten off to a good start in he plays that big hook, and it's an all-or-nothing shot on this lane position where Moser has the more of a steady shot where he'll bowl more steady games, but right now he needs to put some strikes together, put some pressure on Chris Warren. Oh, yes. Rather late and coming, but nevertheless. Don Moser was on last week, so we asked what effect that TV of experience will have on his performance today. Well, last week was my second time making the championship round, and the first time I was a little nervous. Last week, I came out, I was aggressive, and I just didn't play my game. It helped me out, and that's what I'm planning on doing today, is being real loose. And I wasn't disappointed last week. I bowled real well, and hopefully I'll do this well this week. Well, now a 4-6-7 for Don Mosher. Big trouble right now. Don Moser trailing by 22 going into that shot leaves the... Four, six, seven. The only thing he can do is get the ball over in that four, uh, seven zone and hopefully bounce one out or slide it across. Bad shot. All right. So Chris Warren, who won the first match over Mark Williams, leads by 36. Twice as big as usual. Because, honey, you ate twice as much. With extra sundry off Tum ZX, even twice the heart burns no sweat. It's twice as strong, twice as fast as regular Rolaids. I want a little sugar in my bowl. Like most Frenchmen, Gerard Lebrecht has a passion for American things. To Paris fashion, he prefers American jeans. And of all the fragrances in France, he wears cool, clean, old spice. Number one in America, number one in the world. Only one deodorant in the world has so many odor-fighting ingredients with the cool, clean scent of old spice. Do it yourself. Do it for yourself. Do yourself with Minwax and Wood. Wood finish for beautiful color like no other. And Minwax polyurethane for fast-drying protection that lasts. Do yourself with Big guns are out to break the bank for $280,000. It's the Society Bank PBA National Championship next Saturday on ABC Sports. Pete Weber is a defending champion, 54 to the winner next week. Chris Warren. Leaving a nine pin. As loose as we have seen Chris Warren in his eight telecasts prior to today. Of course, he won the first game, 2-2 to 186 over Mark Williams. Just gets a nine down, and we just move now to Bo Burton and Tony Marisi. Thank you, Chris. With me, Tony Marisi. Tony, you're in the number two position, and it looks like Chris Warren has the most success with a big hook, but you're on the left side. Does that have any effect on you? Uh, no, not really, Bo. Uh, Chris is bowling real well right now, but the fact that I'm the only lefty, I think, makes it a little little bit easier for me because uh, I don't pay attention to anyone else but myself, and I really can't control what they do, so I'm comfortable where I'm at. I'm glad it's over there. 
Well, it's not over yet, Chris. We'll see who Tony Morisi meets in the semifinal. Okay. We have four strikes and five frames for Chris One. We are in the capital city of Ohio, Columbus. First time ever that ABC Sports has come to Columbus to do bowling. Columbus Square Palace Lanes. You're looking at Don Mosier. Finished third overall. Needed a strike. After a neat conversion, he was in the fifth frame trying to get it. Moser really not playing his game plan right now. He is uh, playing a very small hook between the second and third arrows, and he's just not getting the carry, and he's drifted high the first three out of four frames, so he needs to get a little more ball speed on that and get some strikes here. Here at the Palace Lanes, they've had a ball tour event. And there were three bowlers that won their first championship ever. Ron Williams, Leroy Bornhop, and Dave Ferraro. Right here, Don Moser would like to duplicate their feats here on the winter tour stop. Three right for Moser. Tomorrow, that doubleheader we spoke of. Illinois at Indiana and Bloomington at 2 Eastern Live. And they both, of course, Indiana in particular, battling for an NCAA berth and then the SEC championship final. And Ole Miss will play the winner of a game later today. LSU and Auburn, or make it Alabama-Auburn. Best shot of the day by Moser. Uses a little more speed, keeps the ball in play, and he's right now going at a 184 place. If Warren can throw a couple of strikes, he can open a tremendous lead through seven frames. And now, Chris Warren, 2, 4, 10. Well, as I said earlier, the player that I played with a lot, Roy Buckley, told me if you play the big hook out here, you can get in a lot of trouble. And once again, Warren had a chance to lock it up and gets in trouble. He has the 2-4-10, needs to slide the 2-4 into the 10. Get the ball over here, the 2 into the 10. That's what he's looking at to maintain his 35-pin lead. This crowd reacting to the attempt at the conversion, which we watch again. Just slides at two in front of the 10, just nipped it too thin. Going back to reiterate the match play style that seems to work best here. If you can keep the ball in play like Moser, you're good over the long haul. Guys who are playing the big hook like Chris Warren are, seem to be a strike or nothing. Right now he's going along at that pace. Could have locked up the match and now he's made it close again. And he's now left the 3-6-10. Remember he won the first game here today. Eliminating Mark Williams, 2-2 to 186. He, in the past, has shown no sign of fatigue. Maybe a little lack of concentration here in the last two frames. Chris Warren will play right along this line. He'll walk along this line and try to get the ball between the second and third arrows with a straight shot for the spare. All right, marks for the spare. Chris Warren. Maintains a lead of 23 pins in our second match. Do you like chicken? Like Wendy's whole breast of chicken filet sandwich? Our chicken club with bacon and chicken parmesan with mozzarella and tomato sauce. You do? Then come to Wendy's for the best chicken sandwiches in the business. They said this concrete would last for years. Now it has expensive water damage. Why? Even concrete needs the protection of Thompson's water seal. It penetrates to protect wood, brick, and concrete from water damage. Thompson's the first name and lasting protection. Now, for every time life turns up the heat... I told you we wouldn't know anybody. A new kind of antiperspirant. Degree. Total strangers. I see that. New degree is body heat activated. Every time your body heat rises, Degree kicks in with extra protection. Precisely when you need it most, Degree has you covered. It's about time. Hey. New Degree protects you most when you need it most. Figure skating's brightest stars light up Moscow. It's the grand finale of the World Challenge of Champions on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Next. 
tonight back again at Columbus Square, Bowling Palace, Columbus, Ohio. And speaking of excellence from Wide World today, Brian Boitano, Debbie Thomas, Scott Hamilton, and more display their skills. Awesome. And Don Mosher wanted that to be special because he is trailing and he had a strike up shooting that shot in the seventh frame. Big shot for Moser could have cut the lead of Chris Warrens down to just three pins with a strike in the seventh and eighth frames. He was real close there in the seventh. Make this four pin, set up the strike in the eighth, and he can make this a close match. Well, oh, it's always great to watch you professionals when the heat's on, when you're actually competing. But like in figure skating, when they have exhibitions or special performances, it's fun to watch you guys in exhibition matches. Well, there's a lot of exhibitions that go around the country, and um, many people can pick them up in their local area, usually on Sunday or Mondays. Now, you'll see the line of Don Moser. He'll slide right here, try to roll it right between the first and second arrows. He's a little bit inside the line. Solid. Showing there is a little room for a margin of error in your spot. Well, he's playing the right shot, I believe. As you see the time clock, 25 seconds for Chris Warren. The down and in shot is much more consistent game after game. Chris Warren's playing the big hook. He has high games and low games. Exciting to watch. Chris Warren, 115 pounder from Dallas, Texas. Chris had a high game this week of 290 and a low game of 137. It shows you how much variance there can be when you have the big hook ball, when he gets get it around the pocket, a lot of strikes. But once again, the carry is not as dependable in this bowling center with the big hook ball. It seems that you take the five pin and take it behind the seven, get the seven ten split. You leave a solid eight or nine, and allows the down and in player like Moser to get right back in the match. Chris's very first qualifying ever for the finals was right here in 1987. Lost, however, to Mark Williams, whom he defeated in the first game. Chris strikes like that. Big shot. Puts down Moser on the ropes and almost leaves a solid nine here. You watch the nine pin go down. He says, whoa, baby. Moser in a much strike situation. If he doesn't strike here, he can't win the match. Two, four, five for the San Jose native. Two weeks in a row he's been on our telecast on his second last week in Baltimore. So he'll have to be content. Two, four, five. Moser just has to get the ball in this zone and hopefully he doesn't chop off one of the spares. Just let her go right through here. Try not to chop the five pin. disappointed guy. We always ask these professionals uh, their hobbies. Don's hobby is very simple. He loves thoroughbred racing. Games of chance. No luck today. And there's a seven standing on the left. Moser just couldn't get on track today. It was high, light, then hard, then soft. And the best he can bowl is 183. Chris Warren has his match well in hand. This young man, his hobby, he likes to build model cars of those classic cars he can't afford to own. Trouble, 172. 172 for Don Moser. So here is your winner, winner of the second match. It'll be Tony Marisi from the left side next. Diane, the key with women players is a little bit different than men. First place they are as accurate as most of the top men players, but they don't get the rotation on the ball to consistently strike. Now let's take a look at my profile, and I'll show you the key points to work on. Number one, get a nice long arc. Look at the height of my backswing. 
It gives me a nice long arc into the foul line. Number two, watch the wrist action at the bottom of the swing. This is a key point. The wrist is cupped, and it snaps right through the ball at the point of release. And finally, a deep knee bend. The legs give you most of the power in your shot. Diane, let's see a try. Boy, that is much better. All right, a lesson learned very well. Number one, a nice long arc. Number two, keep that wrist under the ball. You did that very well. And number three, get a good deep knee bend. You women will get much more power. ABC Sports brings you the ultimate bowling home video. Now, let's get on with the action. Learn how to fix your problems the right way. Improve your game strategy. And practice smarter. It's Bo Burton's instructional video, Score More. Just $24.98 plus $3 shipping. Call 1-800-4-ABC-VCR. If you thought you had to give up comfort to get a close shave, Norelco says, think again. Their revolutionary shaving system shaves skin close in a way that's incredibly comfortable. As the hair enters the chamber, the patented lift and cut system lifts each hair and holds it a split second before a blade cuts it, so it's possible to shave skin close without the blades even touching the skin. The lift and cut shaving system from Norelco. We made close comfortable. St. Patrick's Day is a time of celebration, and this year, Bob Roger and I are making the time of giving as well. Because this month, I'll be in stores and pubs all across America for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Give one dollar to the MDA, and you'll get a shamrock with your name on it. Look for my shamrocks for MDA display wherever Bob Roger and Bud Light are sold. You can't miss me. I'm the redhead in green. <laughs> Chris Warren, with almost carbon copy of his first game, he had the same number of strikes at six. Shot one pin less, 201 to Don Mosher's 172. Now it's the left-hander, Tony Marisi. Here's the final score, Louisville over Southern Mississippi, 83 to 80, automatic uh, bid by winning the Metro Conference Championship to the NCAA. Practice going on here at the 64-lane establishment called Columbus Square Palace, it is that. We go to Toledo where the winner of the PBA National Championship will get $54,000. Then, two weeks from today, North Olmsted, Ohio, for the $160,000 Budweiser Open. Here in Columbus, Ohio, at the start of the week, there were 160 professionals that started, 27 left-handers. Average game score, 200. Top 24, 208. Here's some of the other finishes. Dave Arnold, Ted Hanna's just missed, $3,600. Purvis Granger, Tony Westlake. Gary Dickinson, Goble picking up 2,600 in 11th place. Harry Settled, 12th and 13th, they tied for 13th and 14th. For 13th, they tied. Thompson, McDowell, Pensack. Snell and Columbia Jr., 19th. Peterson in 20th, Tony Weisbrod, 21st. Schlechter, Whitehead, and dropping out to 24, Kazutsky, 24th place. All right. Tony Marisi, 29 years old, a non-winner, nine years of professional, 5'7", 140. Only two lefties made the final 24. And it was Marisi merging to the number two spot. This could be the game. It's always pivotal, pivotal, the semifinal game. Chris Warren, winner of the first two, now has his first shot on the right lane. The overhead shot, Chris Warren on the left side, the approach almost like a 10 pin, playing the big hook. Crossing, crossing over. Mm. The 3 9 10 double wood baby split. Warren has to get that ball between the three and nine pins. Have the ball take out the ten. And here's how it should look. Get the ball in this area. The ball takes out the nine and the ten. Let's see if Warren can duplicate. Trouble. Chris Warren has had so many open frames so far, but he's been able to throw a lot of strikes. Tony Mauricio keeps the ball in play. Should be very tough competition for him. 
The average score so far this year on the PBA Tour Championship round is 210.95 for all the games bowled through eight weeks. Let's see if somebody can get above that today. We've had a little bit lower scoring. Looked like a beautiful shot, but left the 10-10. Chris Warren, if you just joined us, won the first match 2 of 2 to 186 over Mark Williams, then 201 to Don Mosher's 172. All right. Stern in the second frame for Chris Warren. Very close match, in fact, now. Tony Marisi taking a strike. And this the second frame coming up. He'll increase his lead to 21. Nobody has pushed Chris Warren yet. Now, you see Tony Marisi almost standing in the exact same place as Chris Warren. Marisi being a left-hander playing a fairly straight ball. Of course, Chris Warren playing the big hook. Tony is open with a double. The arm swing of Tony Morisi, ideal for the outside line. He gets it behind his back, then it pumps out just a little bit, or right up and lines up with that outside edge board, goes through the ball very confidently, just rips the rack, and for the first time all day long, Chris Warren is trailing. The clock, 25 seconds for Tony Morisi. He'll get the shot off in plenty of time. Fourth career television appearance for Tony. <laughs> Three bagger. Well, Chris, he was my pick today as I watched him warm up for a couple of reasons. Number one, he's so familiar with that outside line. Number two, the pin carry was more dependable for him. He wasn't leaving the solid tens or the solid sevens. And number three, I think it's just time for a lefty to win. We haven't had one this year. And for Chris Warren, who had six strikes in each of his first two matches, his first uh, game number three for him. Chris Warren is sponsored on the Professional Bowlers Tour by the mayor of DeSoto, Texas. And that's just a little bit southwest of Dallas. The mayor also sponsors Robert Lawrence and Del Ballard. He has three good horses out here on the tour. It's one of the more enterprising mayors anywhere to get those young horses. Capacity crowd here will return to the palace. expecting a 70-year-old coach, that's for sure. But I held my own. All right, come on. Come on. They never even saw how scared I was. All right. I wouldn't have tried for this job if it hadn't been for AARP. They've got a program that convinces employers that it's smart to hire people like me. I'm not old. People are people. Some of us have just had a little more practice. That's all. AARP, making a difference. For all the packages you send, the urgent ones, the big ones, the small ones, you can depend on the U.S. Postal Service to get them when you want them, where you want them. rivals clash in the regular season finale. The Fighting Illini meet Indiana on ABC's College Basketball tomorrow. What a doubleheader tomorrow here on ABC. Be sure and watch it. And in basketball today, Virginia keeps rolling on. 69-66. They will go to the ACC final to meet either Duke or Georgia Tech. And Tony Marisi's string ends at three. Leaves a 10 10 here at the palace. The attendance here, phenomenal during the week, averaging about 2,000 a day. And as you know, bowling establishments, limited seating. There you see the size of the crowd. There's an openness and a friendliness here. It's refreshing. 
So it's a spare as we go to Bo and Amleto Monticelli. Thank you, Chris. Tournament leader Amleto Monticelli. Amleto, uh, neither player showing much sign of really making a big game out there. Uh, what do you expect from you and how are you going to play the championship here? I'm going to play the, the same. I've been playing all week, about eight, nine balls. Uh, just uh, going to make good shots. And uh, if I have to make any change, I'll find out when I throw my practice shots. You have a few practice shots before the championship game. He'll make the changes then, Chris. He's going to be awfully tough to beat. And Tony Marisi. Face now with a mm, four, six, ten. Marisi was rolling along. If you were with us all the way, he opened with three strikes. Then marked with a spare. Watch this replay. Talk about a nose hit. Solid on the head pin. All right. But it's a disastrous open frame always on this level of bowling. In fact, any level of bowling, but especially here. Because that cuts... Tony Maurice's lead down to a mere six pins. A double working Chris Warren can take the lead. Mighty in such a small package. It's just amazing when a player gets an opening, he just takes advantage of it. Now watch the pin action. The one, three, the ball rips the five out of the four, seven area. He's got him like it. This is for the lead. Chris Warren. We mentioned the last time he was on, he has a look like in the art world. Our friend Lee Mo Leroy Neiman, smaller version, looks like him. What a great brush stroke on that baby. That's for sure. The big shot, he took advantage of it. And I'll tell you, so many tough players coming out of Texas on the Pro Bowlers Tour. You have Ozio, you have Williams, you have this young man, Chris Warren. And I think the reason they're so tough is that they bowl so much action or match games. Oh, look at this. Season. Oh, look at this. Connecticut over Georgetown. Ha! Ah, to face either Syracuse or Villanova for the Big East title. <laughs> Crushing blow to John Thompson. But a great blow by Tony Marisi here in Columbus, Ohio. Watch the action of the head pin. It's the key pin. The ball's going to hit it first. Now watch it. Keep track of it. Goes to the right sideboard. Here it comes. The messenger shot, they call it on the Pro Bowlers Tour. A big strike right there for Tony Marisi in the sixth frame after that open in the fifth. He can cut the lead of Chris Warren's down to just four pins. He loves it. Match play action. This is so important. Forget the metal play. This is one ball at a time, keep the pressure on your opponent. And the Hilton Head Island bowler is starting to string them here at the end. We're in Columbus, Ohio. More of this match soon. Hey, what's with the two bottles? You gonna wash your hair twice? Oh, funny. It's shampoo and conditioner. Maybe you've heard of them. Yeah, I use them. But I get them both in one bottle with Per Plus. That's great. But I gotta use dandruff shampoo. Yeah, me too. And that's why I got Per Plus for dandruff. Let me see that. Dandruff shampoo plus conditioner in one. Hmm. Hey, my hair's clean, easy to manage, no flakes. Oh, you're beautiful. So let's go. Dandruff control, Per Plus. Great hair, no flakes, no fuss. Barbasol gel gives you a super close shave like the other gel, but at a great Barbasol price. Your Barbasol gel, sir. Your change, sir. Barbasol gel. No wonder it appeals to the rich. The big guns are out to break the bank for $280,000. It's the Society Bank PBA National Championship next Saturday on ABC Sports. On the right, the commissioner of the PBA, Joe Antonora. And on the left, Bill Hadler, the proprietor of the Columbus Square Bowling Palace. 
huge developer here in the Columbus area and elsewhere. Neat people, the Hadlers. Reflection by Chris Warren. Putting together five in a row, Nelson. Chris, that was a big shot for, for Chris Warren for two reasons. Number one, five in a row. But secondly, he pulled the ball a little bit and it's set up in the pocket. When a player can do that with all his power, he's going to throw a lot of strikes. 4.30 Eastern, immediately following us. 4.30 Eastern and Pacific, 3.30 Central Time. It'll be special performances of world's finest skaters. World Challenge of Champions from the Soviet Union. Coming up to game time for Chris Warren. He leads by 14, five in a row, but Tony Morisi is waiting in the wings to take advantage of any mistake. Wanted that one. The fans here are really appreciate it. Well, he could smell victory, number one, with that strike. Number two, he knows Morisi's a tough opponent, and a lot of right-handers have trouble bowling against left-handers. They seem like... Uh, they struggle against left-handers and have a lot of difficulty with them. And Chris Warren is one of those type players. Remember that Chris had an open frame in the very first, then a spare, and then five in a row, and now a spare in the eighth frame. Go, 13 pins separating, but that can change. We said Maurice is playing almost a straighter line. He's going with the boards. He's not giving the ball room to the left. And you can see that he's coming straight down this area right here. He'll come right in here and release the ball right along here, right along the edge. He's down to one second. <laughs> Took an inordinate amount of time, ends up with a one, three, four, six, seven. The ball just hanging off the edge. And he tries to break the big hook at the back end, but not enough room. And Tony must get the ball to the right side of the head pin and drive that head pin into the 4-7 zone. A very difficult washout. Needs this to stay in the match. Okay, Tony Marisi, the only left-hander. What did he... Uh perform better than the why did he perform better than the other lefties well I feel very comfortable playing the outside the extreme outside line when I was growing up as a kid in Brownsville Wisconsin the lanes were very difficult uh, so that was the only place on the lane that I was able to play and I'm very comfortable out there and feel good well he's got to reach back for that experience right now he trails by 32 pins he has a potential 216 Chris Warren going at a 228 pace Reese needs strikes, and he has to hope that Warren falters. All right, a seventh pin for Tony Marisi being watched today by his parents, Ann and Frank. Tony from, uh, he's about the third generation cheesemaker in Wisconsin, La Mira. The Marisi Cheese Company. There's his dad, Frank, and his mom, Ann. Brought us some cheese. Uh, it was wonderful, delightful. String cheese. Fresh. But Tony's in trouble here, ninth frame. Tony, however, pulls out of Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. He attended Navar Junior College for two years toward a business degree, that school in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Now, Chris Warren, ninth frame. And a 310, which he has converted before today. This is his third match. A wild shot by Chris Warren. He's been getting that ball out to the first or second board. And this time he just barely gets it right of the second arrow. Ends up with a 310 baby split. Needs to get the ball over by the three pin. Let the ball take out the 10. If he converts it that way, he will lock up the match and go into the finals against Amleto Monicelli. You're watching TV 27, WHTS. Oh, yeah. your tip was to the lady bowlers how to get more power today uh, there was a pretty good tip on how to convert the 310 and Chris Warren just cuts down the big hook on the ball he doesn't cup the wrist as much as we advise for a strike ball when he rolls for a spare so he has to just keep it on the lane avoid the ball going in the gutter which he's been 
fairly close to a few times. But that's a winner right there. All right. Remember now, this is Chris Warren's third match. 202 to 186 over Mark Williams, 201 to 172 over Don Mosier. And now taking the measure of Tony Morisi and the man warming up, you heard the pinfall, is the tournament leader, Amleto Monicelli. Well, in the finals, we'll have two of the biggest crankers, the biggest hook balls on the professional bowlers tour. And one interesting stat that Chris Warren will be going against is the tournament leader has won seven out of eight weeks so far in the PBA Tour. Look at this line. Mm -hmm. Got all that turn on the ball, gets out to that last board. You see that last board's a maple board. It's a little bit harder than the pine boards. Down the center of the lane, helps the ball break back to the pocket a little bit. Whoa. All right. Chris Warren has won his third match shooting a 236. ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowlers Tour will be back after this message. For great personal service and low everyday prices, check the lineup at your neighborhood True Value Hardware Store, where the March True Value of the Month is this Allenite 30-piece screwdriver bit set. It includes six different types of chips, plus a magnetized driver, socket adapter, and a handy carrying case. In March, the Allenite screwdriver bit set is just $5.99, where you see the banner at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Center. Nothing hurts a bowler's performance like an out-of-balance ball. That's why I teamed up with the people at Ebonite to develop the Thunderbolt Dual Block. Its patented weight placement system has a dual weight block to offset the weight removed by drilling with incredible precision, making every roll more stable, every impact more powerful. The Thunderbolt Dual Block from Ebonite. Monday, an agent key unlocks the secret of the Holy Grail. If this is what I think it is... MacGyver, Monday. Our great car giveaway. Sunday afternoon, March 11th, you can drive home with a 1990 Geo Prism. Compliments of Penn National and Frederick Chevrolet Cadillac Buick Geo. Come enter and win. Ads when you want them. Now, wouldn't that be a switch? Ads you get when you need them. Ads that stay where you put them. Ah, they're right where you left them in the matchmaker. Genuine Bella Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. Ads that match you with what you want, when you want. Now there's a concept. The Genuine Bella Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. No other book can match it. A Bella Plastic Company. Bob Hammerhan at 6 and 11 on 27 News. This is Frank Gifford in New York. Now don't forget, coming up next, ABC's Wide World of Sports featuring... Special performances from the World Challenge of Champions. And speaking of skating, a big day for the Americans at the World Championships in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Just a few minutes ago, Jill Trenary won the ladies' division with Holly Cook third and Christy Yamaguchi fourth for the United States. First, third, and fourth. It was an amazing day, and we're going to have more on that on Wide World of Sports coming up. Meanwhile, in college basketball this afternoon, two more teams are NCAA tournament bound. Boston University has earned a trip to the tournament with a 75-57 victory over Vermont, that in the North Atlantic Conference Final. Meanwhile, in the Metro Conference Final, Louisville defeated Southern Mississippi, that score 83-80. Back now to more bowling and Chris Shankel. Chris? Thank you very much, Frank. And in a delightful Jill Trenery, getting closer to the stars you'll see on Wide World, which follows us today. She is a world champion, deservedly so. Chris Warren, 236, eight strikes over Tony Morisi who shot a 196. We're in Columbus, Ohio for the first time, Bo, and you must have an answer to an Ask Bo question. Well, it's been a while since we had one on, and this week's Ask Bo is from Hanong Lori, Lori Worth of Allentown, Pennsylvania. It's very simply this. What are the requirements to be a professional bowler? And here they are. Very simply, a bowler has to have a minimum 190 average for two years, 
Initiation fee, letter of recommendation, three members' signatures, and complete PBA school number one. If you have any questions for me, write to this address. Okay. Ask Bo and you'll get an answer. Well, Chris Warren has answered uh, anybody that doubted his skills today by winning the first three matches earlier this year. Our friend Randy Peterson won four matches to win a title. And Leto Monicelli looking for his first title of this year. He was strong last year as a PBA Player of the Year, but here's a one-time winner this year. Chris Warren. And a pretty good way of psyching an opponent to open with a, another strike. Well, let's look at some stats as we try to figure this last match. The tournament leader has won seven out of eight weeks this year. The average today is 213. That's a little about three pins higher than the normal average. Open frames five, but 13 strikes on the left lane and only seven on the right. So Monicelli will be finishing on the left. The eight on the right lane for Monicelli we lost in the finals here in 1987 to Leroy Bornhop. The style of Monicelli, the good high push away, the high pronounced backswing, hand open. This hard snap of the wrist, and he leaves a solid eight. Good shot to start with. He was not rewarded, has an easy spare. And from Leto, just back from two weeks vacation in Venezuela, an open frame. Just amazing that a player of his stature could miss a single pin like that. And over the years, what Monicelli has improved more than anything was his spear making. Cuts his hook down, but obviously he has it, doesn't have it perfected as he misses a simple spear, the eight pin, to open the match. Venezuela. Key frame for Chris Warren. He's had five open frames. Now we know he has struck 14 times on the left because he started with a strike on the left-hand lane but only has seven on the right. If he can hit this lane, he's going to have the match well in hand. Chris Warren doubling here in our championship match. With 20,000 to the victor, 10-5 to the runner-up. Chris Warren had made the big jump in the 42nd and final game last night as he shot 257 to leap from about eighth spot all the way up to fifth. Now he's trying to make it number one. Three-bagger and quickly, I'm let him on a celli. Looks to Harry Golden, Frank Esposito, and Kevin Shippey for re -rack on the right lane. Chris Warren playing two different lines. On the left-hand lane, he's going very wide, as you see right here, out to the very first board, snapping it back. About a six-degree angle attack to the pocket, and he's got to like it. This is his favorite lane. Taking advantage of that early double makes it three. He has a 31-pin lead. Now after the re-rack, Monicelli, bowler of the year last year. Strike up. He won't back off. You can be sure of that. Th uh, this year, his best finish was third at Pinole, which Chris Warren won. And then he was fourth in Las Vegas, fourth in Grand Prairie, and fourth in New Orleans. The shot clock, 25 seconds. Monicelli, right now the best player in the world, but has not won so far this year. His, his opponent, Chris Warren, doesn't even look. You can tell by the crowd reaction what Monicelli gets. And another eight for Monicelli. Well, the championship pair is playing much differently from the left lane to the right lane. The left lane, 49 there, Monicelli and Warren can, seem, can seemingly throw the ball as wide as they want. They can start the ball right here and go all the way out to the edge, back to the pocket. We're on the right-hand lane. They must go straighter down. Chris Warren has conquered the right-hand lane fairly well, and so far, that's the difference in the match. 
All right. Win our championship game head to head and let a Monticelli going against Chris Warren. Morning breath ruin a good morning. Get Scope. Scope has two powerful ingredients to kill 90% of the bacteria that cause morning breath. Didn't I, I hear something about a kiss? Right here. Right now. Kiss. It is time for a kiss. Scope, the best thing, first thing in the morning. Hey, you, put that kiss right here. The thinking that went into your Firestone tires took a lot of different tracks. <laughs> At the toughest tracks in the country, we run in all sorts of competitions. We race a lot. We learn a lot. And it all goes into every Firestone tire we make. Firestone. Watch us. We're on the move. Got Firestones again, huh? I've got a one-track mine. And the Colorado Buffaloes, Big 8 competition, having defeated Missouri now over Oklahoma State, 82-72. They will face the winner of OU Kansas, which will be played later. Chris Warren dumbfounded, leading the 2-4-8-10. 2 4 8 10 has only been converted one time on the PBA Tour in the championship round on ABC. That was by Mark Williams, and he got the ball over in this area and actually slid the two pin over in the 10, and the four took out the eight. You have to play the big hook and be a little bit lucky. He's trying it that way. Pretty close, really. So it's 84 pins through the fourth frame for Chris Warren, winner of three matches. And now six pins separate our two finalists. Six pins. In the last three matches, every time Chris Warren had a chance to just put it away early, he made a mistake. This time he made a mistake against the best bowler in the world, and now he only leads by six. Oh, at the last moment, down with the nine. That had to be a confidence builder at this point of the championship game. Watch the ball, it'll cut through the one, three. It should deflect off the five and take out the nine. It doesn't. The two pin comes off the sideboard and gives some help. Spare working. I hit four, seven, ten. The right-hand lane has given everyone trouble, including Chris Warren, but right now he has dug a deep hole for himself. Monicelli has the 4-7-10, needs to get the ball over in the 4-7 zone, slide that 4 into the 10. So for Monicelli, the tournament leader, his second open frame in this title game. Monticelli, who trails by 20, has to collect his thoughts. The main thing is to keep hitting the lane that you like. He's been very close on the left-hand lane every time. So keep striking on the left-hand lane, figure out the right-hand lane, and he can make it a close match. He only trails by 20 through 6. Good comeback as he did in the second frame following an open. Chris Warren, who has qualified for match play 12 times, has made the top five eight times. Yet one title. Same opportunity he had in the fourth to put the match in hand. Let's see if he can strike here. A little body English, hoping to take out the 10. Good shot by Warren, sends it a little bit wide, doesn't quite knock out the 10. See the angle? Chris Warren playing extreme inside line with his feet and the extreme outside line with the ball. A bowling lane 42 inches wide, he's using a lot of it. All right, you just joined us, Chris Warren in his fourth match. 
202 to Mark Williams 186, 201 over Don Mosier's 172, and in the last game with eight strikes, 236, Tony Marisi's 196. One at Pinole this year. Chris Swan, the only player on the tour to cash in all nine tournaments so far this year. He's nine for nine. He'd like to win his second title of the year right now. And if he does, he'll add 20,000 to his 31,000 that he won. Remember, he's 26 years old. Long way to go, and Monticelli is 28, six titles. It's getting must time for Monticelli. If he strikes here, the match will only be a 10-pin difference. Super break, Amleto gets here in the seventh frame. Now watch the action, the two pin. That's the third pin on the left-hand part of the screen. It disappears to the sideboard, drives behind the four, just gives it a little love tap, knocks out the four. Monticelli has finally struck on the right-hand lane. He likes it, and he has a chance to even the match with a strike here in the eighth. His actual first victory came in the Japan Cup. Prior to that, he had finished second six times. Well, you see how wide a hook of Amleto Monicelli throws. And for you people to bowl on short oil, you can say, well, I can hook it that much. But this is 45 feet of oil, not 24 feet. The match is all in eight frames. And Chris Warren bends one into the pocket for his double late in the game. Monticelli is strung three. Both these players taking about as big an angle of attack you can take to the pocket. We believe that'll be about six or seven degrees when you come in from the very last board in the last 15 feet as you study the face of Monticelli. Contemplating what he must do in the last two frames. Warren to retake a 20 pin lead. three in a row will be shooting in the foundation night and he puts it on him his best shot rips the rack just destroys all 10 pins with a light hit and he let Monicelli know that he came to play now Monicelli must strike to keep pace watch this corkscrew shot is phenomenal. The end of the year, one back-to-back -back tournaments became the PBA Player of the Year. Chris Warren never looks at his opponent, nor does Monticelli. Monticelli, when he came out on the tour almost a decade ago, could throw the strike ball like this, but never so disciplined, never take his time, never keep everything under control as he has in this match. Now he needs a strike here in the 10th to make it all even. Monticelli does just that. Warren even put a greater angle on his look away. He did a 90 degree look away and he's still looking 90 degrees away. But the cheering tells what happened. Well, the match is all even. We're set up for a possible tie. But no matter what Monticelli does, he can go out for 234, stringing seven strikes in a row to finish the game. Chris Warren still has a possible 244. This type of performance makes you want to go out and try the game. Well, those stringing them late when the pressure's on speaks well for vacation every now and then. Here comes thousands of miles of running. Here comes thousands and thousands of games of practice. And here comes the best bowler in the clutch right now. He has a chance to win. 
is admitting that Monicelli is performing. Chris Warren really perspiring. He's won three games and now the big one. Big shots coming up for Chris Warren. A short pin count, eight, has allowed Chris Warren to win this tournament by just getting one strike on this ball or the next. No, not yet. That sets up the possibility of a tie match. No, it doesn't. As our statistician, Butch Soper, says, it is all over. Monticelli wins. Thank you. Look at this. In tears. And Weber Monicelli. Now co comforted by Teresa, his wife. Touching Columbus, Ohio. 2.32. That was what Monicelli shot. Chris Warren congratulates him now. Chris shot a 2.22. All right. Let's go back to New York and Frank Gifford. Thank you, Chris. Another dramatic match. You've had a string of them. Coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, special performances by some of the world's finest skaters at the World Challenge of Champions from Moscow. Plus a report on the Iditarod Trail sled dog race and a look at a very special group of athletes at the World Disabled Ski Championships. We'll be returning for more bowling right after this. Man, what a day. I could sure use a vacation. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to be right here. Ice cold, bud. Hey, maybe tomorrow we should bring the boss. Nah. <laughs> when you've got your power stroke going, got confidence that nothing's going to beat you. Introducing Power Stick, the new anti-perspirant that gives you 24-hour odor and wetness protection in just one wide stroke. It takes two strokes of the leading stick to match Power Stick's one-stroke protection, 24-hour protection. In just one stroke, new Power Stick from Fabergé. I know what you're thinking. What am I doing making chicken? Well, I'm making the most delicious chicken sandwiches in the business. Winnie's whole breast chicken fillet, chicken club with bacon, and our chicken parmesan with rich tomato sauce. And uh, muzzy, muzzy, you know, that Italian cheese. So Winnie said, Dad, three chicken sandwiches. Wow, that's pretty radical thinking for an old-fashioned guy. I said, Wendy, that's the kind of dude I am. Come to Wendy's for the best chicken sandwiches in the business. Was that exciting? You bet. Venezuela's pride and joy. And Leto Monicelli, 2.32, 2.22 for Chris Warren. So there you see the money, 20, 10, 5, and so on down the line. But in a very emotional victory, Amleto. Hmm. I don't know what to say. All I know I was, I was very nervous. Uh, Especially on the left side of the lanes was hooking very much for the Spurs, that's why I missed the 8 10. Um, I just got back together, I just forgot, like nothing happened and uh, just make shots and everything happened. You're a great pro. We'll get back to you in a moment. Right now, Bo Burton is with Chris Warren. Thank you, Chris. Chris Warren, it went down to the very last shot and really, we're keeping statistics in the announce booth. You were striking twice as much on the left-hand lane as the right, and Monicelli made you finish on the right, and it seemed to be the difference. What was going through your mind in the tenth? Oh, I was hoping I would have got to in the tenth. It was just to uh, make a good shot, and uh, I definitely decreased my ball speed and hit up on it with my shoulders, tried to use too much of my arms. But he bowled a good game, and uh, he deserved to win because he put me on the spot, and I just didn't come through. Well, actually, that's the Pro Bowlers Tour. You come down to the 10th frame. It's the guy who can perform in the 10th. Monticelli performed. But 
Really, uh, you had a great week. You tried to be the first two-time winner, and I'm sure you'll be back next week. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Uh, Columbus has always been a good place for me to come to bowl. Uh, I made telecasts here a couple years ago, and, uh, you know, Amaletto lost, finished second there, but... <laughs> All right, Chris, and Chris, you have the winner. Our host, uh, Bill Hadler, and his son, George, the executive vice president, with the spoils of victory. Enjoyed seeing him win. We're so glad to have you back in Columbus, Ohio. It was a great match. It was really exciting, and we have two checks for you. We have a small one, and we have the big one. This one's a little hard to cash, so we're going to give you this small check for $20,000, along with our congratulations. to have everybody at Columbus Square Bowling College in Columbus, Ohio. I want to I wanna thank you, uh, Joe. I want to thank Phil Russo and everybody here. I know they were pulling for me because uh, something about it, uh, maybe because I lost in 87. Thank I want you. to hear from Teresa. Thank you very much, all the people here. And uh, I don't know what to say. Okay, congratulations. Our time's going out. Have a little voting tally. 232, 222. For Nelson Burton, Jr., I'm Chris Sankel. See you in Toledo a week from today. Coming up next, ABC's Wide World of Sports returns to Moscow for special performances from the biggest stars in figure skating. It's the grand finale of the World Challenge of Champions. The Professional Bowlers Tour has been brought to you by Firestone. Watch us. We're on the move. By the United States Postal Service, we deliver for you. new body heat activated degree antiperspirant. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.